What do you see up there? Northern light. It's not even dark yet. We're in Woodbury, Minnesota. 94 is right here. This is Emma. Highly visible already. We got a nice little 12% moon. Unbelievable, they're already out. It's gonna be a good night, Emma. Let's go north. Good morning, it's May 10th and welcome to another Explore Everyday video. And This could be a big one. We are in full anticipation of a potentially epic aurora show tonight. I don't want to over exaggerate, but all signs are pointing towards very big aurora to the, to the mid latitudes, if not lower. Uh, we have a very active sun in the last 36 to 48 hours. We have two large sunspots that have been shooting off solar flares, which launch coronal mass ejections, otherwise called CMEs, which is basically shooting plasma out from the sun, which hits the earth, which creates the aurora in the simplest terms. So tonight is promising to be a big aurora night due to two sunspots on the sun launching off CMEs, uh, region 3663 and region 3664. And what do you know? I have a solar filter from shooting the eclipse last month. And instead of having it get all dusty, sitting away for 20 years until the next eclipse, Let's bust it out and see what those sunspots look like. So I am getting ready to go out and shoot the Aurora tonight. My only decisions are, do I stick around the Twin Cities here in Minnesota and shoot some scenes that maybe you can't get because of light pollution traditionally? Or do I go up north to my normal spots and find some new spots up there to shoot? It's a win-win either way. Hope you join along on this Aurora adventure tonight. And next time I see you, I will be under a dark sky. And with the magic of video, here we go. Welcome to the Aurora. I got my daughter Emma with me, seeing the Aurora for the first time really, really well. And we are in downtown Stillwater. There's a car coming at me. There's lights everywhere, but they are still completely naked eye visible behind us. We could see them before it got dark. It was still twilight. Emma and I had to pull over. What do you think, Emma? Cool. What else? Just cool? They were pretty. And what did you do? Who'd you call? My mom. Our families are all taking pictures in the middle of the city on their driveways. And Everyone's backyard. loving it. They are overhead. I can see them to the south right now. We got coronals over the top of us. We're trying to get north. We can't even get out of the city. Typically, shooting the Aurora is a very passive, take-your-time process. This night, the first hour was pure chaos. These are a few shots Emma and I took just a few minutes after shooting the intro video over 94. I could see the Aurora while driving and that it was reaching to the top of the sky. We had to pull over. I didn't know where to point the camera. They were lighting up the sky from west to east and straight overhead.
I had all kinds of ideas bouncing around in my head. Do we scrap going north and head to Minneapolis or St. Paul? Get that once in a lifetime shot over the skyline? But the Auroras are always unpredictable. What if they quit before I drive 30 minutes to Minneapolis? They're going crazy right now. And this is how I ended up in downtown Stillwater. It was a great compromise to shoot the Aurora over well-known landmarks, yet it was still on our way to the north. We're trying to get north. We can't even get out of the city because it's so naked eye visible in the middle of downtown Stillwater with all this light pollution. So we are looking forward to getting north. We're gonna go about an hour, hour and a half north if we ever get out of the city. We keep pulling over to take pictures. But here we are, probably the greatest Aurora show I've ever seen it is, and for sure, Emma, maybe once in a lifetime, you never know. But we are going to keep moving, right? Yeah. Let's go. I never imagined I would get Aurora shots like this over a city as bright as Stillwater. This first shot is from an overlook looking right down Main Street, with Aurora spanning the horizon and the St. Croix River to the right. This next image was taken pointed to the southeast and shows a flooded St. Croix River along with the bridge connecting Minnesota and Wisconsin. Again, an aurora shot I would have never imagined possible. One of the Stillwater trolleys made for an interesting subject with the Northern Lights. I actually hosted a reading of my children's book, Hoo Hoo Goodnight, on one of these trolleys many years ago. for that iconic landmark shot I was looking for. A full sky of aurora over the historic Stillwater Lift Bridge. The 1,053-foot bridge was built in 1931. In 2020, the bridge was converted to a pedestrian bridge, and traffic uses the bridge shown earlier in the video. The lift still runs daily to allow pleasure boats and fishermen up and down the river. Is this the brightest aurora ever shot over the 93-year-old bridge? We finally committed to getting north of the cities, and we weren't the only ones heading north. Our highway north at 11 p.m. was busy like a Friday afternoon with everyone heading to their cabins. I often see lots of questions, what does the aurora look like with the naked eye? All of the real-time video in this vlog is very close to what I could see with my eyes. With the time lapses and still photos, I did very little image enhancement. In fact, some images, I had to lower the saturation from the raw file. Typically in my videos, I like to add the photo settings for final images. Because there are so many images in this video, I think it would be distracting. All photo images were shot between 1 and 3 seconds, between f1.2 and f2.8, and around ISO 2000. These are the first shots we got after getting north of the cities.
All right, Emma and I's adventure, Northern Lights, Aurora Adventure continues. It's a little after one. I just had to wake her up from a little cat nap. It is just kicking off behind us. It was completely visible, I read. I quick got some panos done, some shots done. There's a corona coming down. I'm sh we're shooting south. This is southwest right here. We're not, we're not even shooting north. Everything is to the south. It's unbelievable. Just pillars of light coming down from the sky. We got some clouds coming in, but they just add to it actually. They're not wrecking it. It's not full clouds. We got a nice reflective pond right here. So, so far tonight, to recap, where do we start? Stillwater, Emma? Mm -hmm. Talk loud. The microphone's yes. over there. Where do we start? Woodbury. And then where do we go? Stillwater. And now we've been up north of the cities and just finding different spots to shoot. We still haven't made it to the cabin where we're going, and I can shoot a bunch of shots there. The problem is the best shots at the cabin are looking north, and we're shooting south. The northern lights are shooting south. It's unbelievable. Look at this. I can't even I can't even comprehend what's happening right now. This is the best aurora I've ever seen. The best most people. I'm sure this is going to be the most captured aurora event in the history of the world. Uh, just quick looks on Twitter. I mean, there's loads of people posting stuff out there. Um, it's breathtaking. I can't even. What do you say? Emma speechless. She's got nothing. She's not. She's not ready for the camera yet. Although she does have a storm chasing video out. Go find that on my YouTube page. So we're gonna just hang out. Like we're all by ourselves now. She might go crawl back in the sleeping bag, catch another nap. But I had to pull her out. This was too too good to look at. It's a little after one. We got basically three more hours until it starts getting light out. So. I'm probably not sleeping tonight, this is too good. So we'll check back in in a little while.
I've never seen anything like this. I can't keep up. There's Aurora, 360, all around. I'm only running two cameras. I flew the drone a little bit. Um, I had another camera in the Tahoe. Emma's sleeping, I don't wanna wake her up. I got a time lapse running over there. I've just been shooting video with this thing. I've been shooting stills with it. I'm kind of out in a wetland here. And you got all kinds of whooper wills and other frogs and birds that are out here chirping. We're gonna start hearing the birds chirp for the morning here pretty soon. Um, the other thing I noticed, the aurora is so bright, I can't photograph the Milky Way. I'm shooting to the southeast, the aurora completely washes it out. You can't see the Milky Way. Um, it's just incredible. I'm getting tired. It's gonna be an all-nighter. I gotta push through and just see what happens. It's, like I said, it's 360. As far as the eye can see is Aurora. I'll probably never see this again. It's remarkable. And we might have more of this tomorrow night. But I'm just happy I'm out. And I was just thinking when, when I'm an old man on my deathbed, not to get too depressing here, but I'll remember this night with my daughter Emma for the rest of my life. That, that just, it's remarkable. I wish she was a little older. She's just, she's sleepy, had a soccer game, scored a goal today. They won the game, um, but she's 11, she's tired. She needs her sleep, but I'll get her up if anything really crazy happens. I got her up once already, but man, this is just beautiful behind me. I can see the, the pinks and purples in the camera. I'm just gonna keep doing what I'm doing here. I haven't even got to the cabin yet. I'm still half an hour from the cabin. The night continues. It's got to be 2, 2.15, somewhere in there right now. So we only got, the first mosquito I've seen all night. We've only got a couple hours left and it's going to start getting light out. Short nights right now. May 10th, now it's May 11th. Holy cow. part of the night we still got 360 auroras all around it's kind of all green right now to be honest I got a time-lapse running behind us um, nice aurora over my shoulder here Emma's sleeping in the Tahoe um, yeah we got some fog kind of in here we got water on both sides of the road we're in the grind part of the night. It's sometime after two. I'm not sure what time astronomical twilight begins. Uh, probably between 3.30 and 4.15. So we're gonna start running out of a nighttime here pretty soon. Um, but the good thing about that is you can get purple auroras just before sunrise. So I gotta grind for that. We're in it this far, there's no point in going to bed until it starts getting light out. We haven't even made it to the cabin yet. We're still 20 minutes from the cabin. So, I don't know, I gotta let that time lapse run, maybe taking a shot every three seconds. So 20 a minute. I gotta let it run like 10, 12 minutes to get up to about 250. So let that keep doing its thing. I'm gonna turn this off and just enjoy the, the sounds of the swamp and the night sky. As the clock moved past 3 a.m., we still hadn't even reached the cabin yet. I call this the green aurora part of the night. The lights were still 360 all around and everywhere was cloaked in green. Our next stop was along the upper St. Croix River, 
at a spot where I've spent my entire life fishing. As I mentioned earlier, as we got closer to dawn, the purples will start to show up. And did they ever, and they did not disappoint. After spending about 30 minutes along the river and rustling Emma out of her sleeping bag to take a peek, it was finally off to the cabin. As the clock neared 4 a.m., a bit of dread began to creep in. I knew there was no stopping the approaching dawn, and this once-in-a-lifetime event would be over shortly. I wanted it to go on forever, but the grand finale was nothing short of spectacular. maybe 4 15 4 20 it's starting to get light in the east um this is pretty much the wrap it up for night one friday saturday morning now i think there's going to be a roar again saturday night later today so this could be the end of the video or maybe there'll be a whole nother night that i'm out chasing these auroras you can still see them up in the sky here um i'm just gonna set I got one time lapse running. We're at the cabin now. I'm in bed. One time lapse shooting the cabin. I'm going to set this one to priority aperture. See if I can catch the sunrise. I got one out at the deer stand that I shot the Milky Way over earlier this year. So I'm going to have three cameras going, grab my sleeping bag, and go crawl into bed. So it has been a phenomenal night. You know, nothing's better. Yeah, we're going to lose the Aurora here pretty quick, so I'm going to quit yapping here, get this thing shooting, and thanks so much for watching. This is the end of it, but hopefully there's more to come tomorrow night. Unfortunately, there were no more Northern Lights that next evening, but I'm still blown away with what Emma and I witnessed that night and how many different places we were able to capture images, starting in Woodbury, Minnesota, right at home, and ending up in Grantsburg, Wisconsin. It's a night I'll never forget. 
If you made it this far, oh my gosh, thank you so much. Please leave a comment if you saw the lights that night, or if this video maybe encourages you to find a dark sky next time the aurora is out. We'll see you in the next one.